Happy, happy Monday. And uh, today we are talking mental health mums or really women more generally. And yes, I know men get depressed and men do get anxious, but women are almost twice as likely in both anxiety and depression uh, to develop both anxiety and depression. And while um, this month we're not going to be educating specifically on those conditions, I am going to give you four really big tips on how to look after your mental health, um, specifically for women. And um, hopefully you don't experience depression or anxiety or any of those things ever. So um, just for a bit of background, depression involves um, prolonged feelings of hopelessness, worthlessness, lethargy, sadness. Anxiety is a bit like being on speed. It's related to depression, but it's not the same thing. It's um, illogical or unexplainable or not... Um, or fears about the future that aren't necessarily uh, grounded in facts. Um, these encompassed in these two illnesses is also postnatal depression, post-traumatic stress, body dysmorphia, um, and all of these um, conditions can be triggered by hormone fluctuations. So think PMS um, and extreme versions of PMS. Think postnatal depression, uh, menopause. Uh, menopause, I think, is the single greatest time in a woman's life that she is at risk of depre developing depression. Um, but the exact mechanisms behind the hormonal influences is still quite unclear. And I'm going to give you a further resource now. Go to beyondblue.org. They have um, a fact sheet and a checklist where you can go through and examine whether or not you're experiencing depression or anxiety and whether it's mild, moderate or severe. Uh, so beyondblue.org.au. So rather than going deep into um, these conditions, what we want to talk about this month is what we can do about them. So this is about prevention. Um, the tip I'm going to give you today is as effective as antidepressants. Um, and it's about keeping mentally healthy as well as physically healthy. So like actual mental health. So today's tip is movement. Um, movement, is, like it's obvious movement can affect feelings. Like think about when you're tired or sad, you sort of move more slowly, you slump down. If you feel anxious or stressed, you might be shaking, you might move quickly, you might speak quickly. Um, or you might become completely paralyzed because uh, for people with anxiety, sometimes making a decision is the hardest thing. Um, but the connection between your body and brain is a two-way street, which means the way you move affects how you feel as well. So faking a smile has been shown to um, uh, trigger the same hormones as when you're smiling for reals. Um, and then there's sort of conflicting evidence with your power poses and the hormones responsible for confidence and, and outgoingness. Um, so what kind of exercise, I'm so glad you asked, or not necessarily exercise, what kinds of movement? Well, the following three modalities have been shown uh, to be as effective, sometimes more effective than antidepressants and as effective, sometimes more effective than psychotherapy. And hence it makes sense if you incorporate these kinds of movements into every single day, um, it should either uh, help your mood or mental health disorder or prevent you developing one or keep you in a state of optimal mental health. So regular aerobic exercise is number one, walking, swimming, um, rhythmical exercises on the power plate, uh, cycling, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's one study which is literally any kind of movement, whether it was resistance training, balance training, yoga, uh, flexibility, stretching, um, treadmill, sport, any kind of movement, uh, as long as you enjoy it, is as effective as an antidepressant. So it has to be regular every day. You need that hit of happy hormones. 
Uh, meditative movement like yoga tai chi so it's not just lying down meditating it's moving meditation mindful meditations um, really great for your brain really good in mood enhancement and I will say this if you have um, depression mild depression uh, always go see your GP do that checklist go see your GP get a mental health plan um, but if you want to feel better now, um, uh, if your illness is a slowing down one like depression makes you go slow, then the kind of exercise you want to do needs to perk you up. So that's where you go aerobic, um, gym classes, that sort of thing, walking. If you are already anxious, and you're already high, it is like being on speed, then you need to do movement modalities that brings you down. So like when we're talking hormonal balance, we're talking like balance in all senses of the word. If you're high, your exercise has to be low. If you're low, your exercise has to come up high. And we're always aiming for that moderation, moderate benchmark for optimal health, best bang for buck. So if you have any questions, just post them all direct message us and we will have another tip for you on Monday.